In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a fully functional WordPress website from scratch, right from purchasing the domain name to getting the hosting to installing WordPress and installing themes. I'm going to show you how to customize your website, how to add elements on your page and how to get everything done to build a fully functional website. And all of this is going to be beginner friendly. So if you've never built a website, you have no idea what you're doing. Don't worry. You can just follow along this tutorial and have a fully functional website. And don't worry if you get stuck somewhere, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment and we answer every single comment answering your questions about building websites. Of course, if you're ready, let's get started. So we'll divide this process of building a website in a few different steps. The first step is getting domain and hosting for your website. Then we'll install and set up WordPress, which will create a templated website and you can start using your website then. Then we'll install a customized theme on the site and then we'll customize pages, customize the appearance, upload our logos, change the appearance of the website completely to how we want it. And then we'll install a few plugins on the site to add some much needed functionality. And everything is a step-by-step -step process. I'll go through the process step-by-step -step so you can pause the video, follow along if you like to, and everything is simple. Even if you're a beginner, it's absolutely easy to follow. So. First, let's switch to my screen and let's start the first process, the uh, purchasing the domain name. Now, what's the difference between a domain name and hosting? Well, domain name is the name of your website, how people actually find your website, and you can compare that to your address. And your hosting is like your house. So you need both of uh, them, them connected together so that people can actually visit your website. So hosting is where you store all the contents of your website, the images, the database, uh, the content of the site, and the address is the hosting, or not the address, is the domain name, which is where how people actually find your website. Now, the easiest way to uh, actually find an appropriate domain name, which is also available, is to just do this, which I have already done on the screen. Search for WB Beginner's Business Name Generator. And this will bring up the free business name generator by WB Beginner. And what this lets you do is just enter a keyword and it'll suggest you tons of different uh, domain names related to your keywords, which are available to purchase. Now, one thing to remember is, let's say, for example, I type in roofing and let's imagine we are building a roofing website. So I'll just do this. I'll click generate and you'll see tons of ideas here. And what uh, all of those options, uh, the, the important part to understand is that you'll see the domain names that are available to purchase as well. Now, you don't have to make a purchase here. You just have to find out the domain name which is available so that you can actually proceed to the next step because in the next step, we'll purchase hosting. And if you go to the link in the description and I also place that link on the screen to our partner, Bluehost, they offer a fantastic price for new website owners who want to start their websites and they'll give you a domain name for free absolutely for an entire year. So you don't have to purchase a domain name right now. You just have to find the domain name which is available, which you think is appropriate for your business or your website. And then just go to the link, go, go there to the site and just connect it to your hosting account. I'm going to uh, just show you the process. So the link on the screen, uh, which is here, I'll just place it and I'll just enter it in my website browser. The link is wbbeginner.com forward slash refer forward slash Bluehost. So once you go to this page, this is the page that will open up. And you'll see all the details about the pricing. For all WordPress users, the pricing starts at just $275 a month. It's absolutely amazing. And you get a free domain name for the first year. You get a free SSL certificate. And you also get one-click WordPress install. And I'm going to take you through the process absolutely. So you can also go here and choose some of the other plans which have a little more features. For example, you want more than one website. You can go to the Choice Plus online store and pro plans as well. But the easiest or the I'd say cheapest plan is to start with or you can start with is the basic plan. Now, let's say, for example, you are happy with this plan, just click the select button and it take you to the page. And all you have to do is fill in your details com com uh, or complete the purchase. Now, important step here is that if you find the right domain name from the previous step, just enter the domain name here, right? Just enter a domain name here and it'll be added to your account. So let's say for example, roofingexperts.com. This is just an example because I'm, I'm pretty sure this domain name won't be available, but let's say this was available and I use this domain name. I just have to click the next button and take this to the next step. Now, since I'm not purchasing a domain, I'm just showing you how to do it. I'm not gonna actually do this, I'm going to go here, create my domain later, but you should be absolutely entering the domain name that you have in mind here and clicking the next button. And if you already have a domain name purchase, which is also the case, sometimes just enter the domain name that you purchased. You already have some place with other registrars. Just enter it here and do this. And in the next few steps, I'll, I'll show you how to actually connect your existing domain name to the website as well. I'm going to do this. You should be doing probably this. So let me click this. 
And the next step, it's it's all basic information. You have to just make a purchase. So you find out all the information or fill in the information, your first name, and all the personal details that are required to actually make a purchase. You just double check the uh, package information here. It's a 12 month pro, uh, plan. You can go for 36 months, one month, and uh, the pricing is displayed on the screen here. And you also have some additional, I say optional purchases you can add to your account. Some of these are required. Some of these are th completely up to you if you want to purchase it. For example, I wouldn't go with, with the code guard. I wouldn't go with site log, but you can go for professional email, a three month trial and use this as well. I've shown in a previous video how to set up a comp uh, email with your Bluehost account. So that's something that if you want personal or professional email, then you can keep it here. I'm just going to uncheck it just for simplification. But if you want it, you can just do this as well. Then all you have to do is after filling in the information, just fill in the uh, your card details, how you want to make the purchase. And you can just click the submit button and the purchase will be done. Now, a few things will happen after the purchase is done. You will get an email or confirmation of the purchase, but you'll also get access to the Bluehost admin area through a link that will be sent to your email. Once you click on that, you'll access the Bluehost backend, which is where we'll continue the process. Apart from that, all other emails you get for, hey, purchase confirmation, your card being charged, that's completely obviously uh, obvious, that, that, that email. But you should watch out for the email coming from Bluehost that these are your login details or this is how you access the backend. So click on that and open up a new window on your computer. And that's where you'll see the backend of Bluehost. So I'm gonna just directly jump into that, that part where I am inside the Bluehost admin area. So once you're inside the admin area of your Bluehost account, this is somewhat what it will look like. You might be on the home page, but I'd recommend that you go to the website section. And inside the website section, it's not going to look exactly like this because I have uh, many, many websites created on my Bluehost account, but you won't have any websites if you're just starting out. So all you have to do is click this button called add site, which will create or start the process of actually creating our website. So I'll click it here and let's the process begin. And now you have these options. Do you want to install WordPress or you want to transfer an existing WordPress site or you want to create an empty website? WordPress is the easiest way how we can build websites. So I'll click the or select the default option and just click continue. And now we can give it a site title. Now, if you don't have a title in mind, you can obviously change it later, but I'm just going to give it, hey, roofing experts, because that's what we are going with. And I'm going to show you how to change the site title later as well. So don't worry if you don't have the perfect answer, just type anything you want and we'll just go or if you don't want to do anything just click skip and you can go do this later as well once you're happy with it click continue or skip and then here is where you connect your domain name so when you make the purchase if you have entered the domain name already on the account it will show up here or you should just add it here and this will directly be connected uh, to your website this is an important step to uh, to do because it saves you all the hassle of manually connecting your domain name with your website later just enter domain name here and click next and everything will be set up for you as I mentioned that I have actually not made the purchase because I already have a Bluehost account. I'm going to be going with use a temporary domain, but you should be entering your domain name right here and the entire thing and then clicking the next button or the continue button. I'm going to go with this option, use a temporary domain. I'm going to click continue, which will take us to the next step. Now, this is where the magic happens. You don't have to do anything to install WordPress. Bluehost makes it absolutely easy. The one click install literally is a one click install. And as you see, uh, right now you're following on the screen, everything is being installed for you automatically. Once this is done, the page will refresh and I'll show you how to access your website. So we'll pause the video here and resume when this is done. So in just a minute, the process was completed and you'll be returned back to the website section right here. Now, you'll see just the one website. Now, since I have more than one website, approximately 118 websites in my Bluehost account, I just had to search for it with the title of the website. You won't see this. You will just see the website. And all you have to do is just click on the website name here, or you can go to the settings or edit site. I'll go to settings first so I can just show you how uh, the settings for the website work. And then we'll go and edit the site and I'll show you the process of setting it up. Now, why I'm showing you this part is because you need to understand where you want to make changes if you want to make changes through the back end of the website. You have the security features, you have the backups features, you have the pre-installed plugins here. You have the different users here, the speed, the advanced and settings. Now, this is not the scope of this video. I just wanted to tell you that once you have a website created and let's say you want to make changes from the backend, this is where everything happens. Now, most of the time, if you're setting up your website, you might not need to go here, but it's good to know. Now, let's click the edit WordPress site button. This will start the setup process for WordPress and it'll open up WordPress or sorry, Bluehost WordPress uh, setup process. So let's click the button 
and this will open up the uh, or open up a new tab where we'll uh, start the process of setting up the website so let's wait for it to load so this is the first screen that you'll see in the Bluehost onboarding or setup process. This is where you'll be able to set up the WordPress website using Bluehost setup. Now, most of the time, I will not recommend you go through this process because the process I'm gonna be teaching you is more flexible and more robust, and that uses most of the time backend of WordPress. So I'll start the process and show you what recommended choices I'd like you to make to uh, set up your website. So I'll click the start setup process and it'll go to the next step. Now, this will ask you, hey, have you used WordPress? This is, uh, again, doesn't matter that much. So let's say you have used it before a little bit. So I'll just say, hey, use this some, click continue experts. Uh, and then we'll go to the next step. And now you can describe what kind of website it is. So I can just type in roofing and you, all you, what you can do is also select the uh, appropriate option from these, uh, I say, predetermined filters. So let's uh, go with the business website here and we'll click continue setup. And again, we'll have uh, more options to uh, like tell the website or tell uh, Bluehost about what our website is about. So we have agency, arts and craft, autos and repairs, and plenty of different options. Now, this doesn't matter usually that much, but you can actually do this so that it uh, gives you the appropriate options. So in this case, since it's a roofing business, I'll stick with trade and repair services, and I'll go to continue setup to go to the next step. And now this is where the design options are presented by Bluehost. Now, I would not recommend you do or customize your website here because as I said, I'll be telling you how to customize your website uh, to a more, I'd say, advanced degree and with more flexible options in the, once we have set up the website. So in these, uh, in this particular steps, I'm just gonna click the next step and just keep going and keep going uh, forward without actually changing anything. And this is what I would recommend you do too so that you can actually finish the website up. And then once it's done, we'll go into the back end of the website. I'm gonna tell you everything, how WordPress works, how to actually install themes and customize it. So let's wait for this to load and we'll proceed once it's done. So on the next step, you again get to customize the design and some other color options. You have theme styles and colors and we'll customize all of this from WordPress itself. So I'll just keep clicking the next button to proceed with the default options. Once again, in the design options, I'll just click the next button to proceed to the next step. In the header design option, I'll again click the next button, proceed to the next step. In the homepage layout options, again, I'll click the next button to proceed to the next step. Once again, in the page layout options, I'll just click the next button and then Bluehost will recommend you a few different plugins you should install on your site to start using them. You can keep them installed, but I'll tell you the process anyways on which plugins to install, how to install them. So it's up to you. I'll just uncheck them for now so that I can actually demonstrate the process of creating and installing plugins on your site. So it makes your life easier when you have to install plugins on your own. Let's click the next button. All right, the setup is now complete and technically your website is now live. So once I click the complete setup button, it'll take you to the next step, which is the back end of the website. Then we'll be able to start seeing our website uh, actually finished. So let's this com uh, let this complete and I'll show you how to access the front end and the back end of your website. So once the setup's complete, you are logged into the backend, as I mentioned, and this is what you will see in the backend. Now, this is the Bluehost dashboard, but you also have a WordPress dashboard, which is here. Now, you might be wondering, what is this website? What does it look like? This does not look like the website I was trying to create. But let me explain the concept of a backend and a frontend to you. So what I'll do is first click this button called View Site, and it'll open up a new tab, your actual website, which is what users will see. So let's wait for it to finish uploading or uh, uh, completely loading. So this is your website. This is the front end of your website. That means users, when they come to your website, this is what they will see. This is the back end of the website where you cus can customize your website. You can customize the pages, you can customize uh, the content of the pages, create new pages and do all of that. And we'll be going into some of these features, some of these things inside WordPress by going to posts, you are going to add new media, pages and moderate comments, install plugins and themes and all of those things. So this is where you will actually control your website. This is called the admin area or the back end and this is the front end. Now, once you log out, once you close this, how do you get access to the back end of your website? So there are two ways to do this. This is very important to understand. So please pay attention. So inside your Bluehost account, you can actually just log into the Bluehost account. And once you're here, you can just click edit WordPress site. It'll take you to the website automatically. But that's a cumbersome step, right? Because okay, you have to uh, go into Bluehost all the time. So the easier method is to just use, in, uh, use the login logout process inside WordPress. 
for but for that to work you'll have to reset your or change your password first so let's change your uh, password and then we'll go and actually uh, I'm going to show you how to log into the website and also log out once you're done uh, making any kind of changes. So we'll go inside the users section here and inside we'll go to all users. Now this is where you can add more users to your site, uh, add more contributors and WordPress is a robust system for doing this. Now since uh, you already are a user, you are the administrator of the website, you already have this uh, username created. Now important to remember that the username cannot be changed it, it uh, there's a complicated process to it so what you should be noting down is what your username is and we'll be resetting or creating a new password because this is what will be required for you to actually log into your account so i'll click the edit link here and this will open up the entire profile page for this username so what i'm going to do is open notepad up and i'm going to just copy the url of the website and place it in my notepad here and also just make sure once we go here i'm going to also uh, take the nickname which is your username and i'm going to just place it here and this is where the password can be changed if i go here i can actually set a new password so click this button and this will open up this option now wordpress creates or gives you a recommendation for a default password which is very very strong so you can use it if you can remember it if you want to save it somewhere but you can also change this and just add your own password just for this demonstration i'm going to just keep this password so i'm going to copy it and paste it in a notepad file on this uh, outside the screen here and i'm just going to uh, click the update profile button so once this is done the profile password for this uh, particular user will be updated and this is how you'll be able to log in and log out of the site so let's wait for the page to uh, finish uploading and finish uh, updating and i'm going to show you how to exactly do that all right the profile is now updated so how do you log out of your website and how do you log into your website so for logging out of your website all you have to do is go to the top right corner of the website which is here and once you hover over this you'll see the same options that you saw in the user section username edit profile and log out so once i click log out this is what you will see on the screen let the page load so this is what you will see after you've logged out and this is also the login screen for your website so let's say accidentally you close this. Now, how do you get back to this area of your website? As I said, the, the default option is there. You can go into Bluehost and just click this. But if you want to go directly to this area, all you have to do is just take your website's URL, right? The domain name, just paste it here in the address bar and just append the keywords that I'm going to show on the screen. WP, which stands for WordPress, hyphen, admin, A-D-I-M-I-N, -M and press enter. And this is going to bring you to the exact same screen that you saw after I logged out. And you'll have the option of adding your username or your nickname, as we saw, and then your password to log into the site. So let the page load and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So the page is now loaded. Let me just copy and paste the username. Let's also copy and paste the password. And let's log in. All right. So this is how you log into your site. And as I said, this is the backend area or the back end of the site where you'll be making changes to the website. And this is the front end of the website, which is what users will see. And a clear sign to understand if you're logged into your account or logged into the admin area is that you'll see this bar that you see on the top of the screen. This is only visible to you when you're logged in. For your users, this won't be visible. So don't worry about them seeing the, uh, any of these options. Heading back to the admin area. Now, as I said, once the setup process is complete, now technically, this is where building the website process is complete. Your website is live. Anybody can just enter the domain name and find your website. It's that easy. Now, you want to customize this website, right? You want to have the appearance to something that you like. You want to add a new theme, have some different colors for your brand, all that good stuff. So I'm going to show you in the next now process on how to actually add new themes and customize themes according to you. So what we'll be doing to customize the appearance of a website is adding a new theme to a website. You can think of theme as a new chassis for a car or a fresh coat of paint or something in the middle where you can change some of the interiors as well. So to add new themes, you'll have to go into the appearance section here and you see there's an option for themes. So I'll click the themes button here and I'll open up the themes option or themes page inside WordPress. So here, as you see, all the themes already on your site. This is what is installed by Bluehost themselves. These are some default WordPress themes that are provided with uh, the uh, WordPress themselves. So if you want to install a new theme, all you have to do is just click the add new theme button 
and this will open up the WordPress repository of themes. And every theme that you see here is actually free to install. Some features might be limited to free users or premium users, but most of these themes are actually free to use. Now, here you'll find tons of different options to actually install themes and have them set up on your site. Now, there's so many themes available. It's very complicated choice on which of these themes to choose. So I'm gonna give you the easiest option. We've been using themes on our sites for a very, very long time. And the most recommended theme that we can now also recommend you is Astra theme. It's called A-S-T-R-A, -A, Astra. So we'll search for the Astra theme. And once it loads, I'm gonna install the Astra theme for you. So this is the Astra theme which I'm talking about. And don't worry, what you see here as the preview, it can be completely customized. This is one of the best things about the Astra theme. And this is why we recommend it. And it's also one of the most popular themes inside WordPress. So let's click the install button and let's wait for it to install. So theme is now installed. Let's also activate it. All right, the Astra theme is now active on the site. Now, if I just go to the front end of the site and I refresh this, you'll see some changes happening, but not too much. And that's completely all right. You see, there's some things uh, have changed, things have moved around, and it doesn't ma make a huge difference in the site, but we're getting to the good stuff. So once this is done, we'll install a companion plugin for Astra, which will give us tons of options to customize the site. Now this is where uh, the recommendation for Astra comes into play because Astra is very flexible in terms of how you can change the appearance without have, actually, actually having any design skills yourself. So what I'll do is go into the plugin section and I'll click on add new plugin, which will again bring us to the WordPress repository of plugins. I'm gonna search for a specific plugin and install it on our site. So in the search option, you can just type in starter templates. So I'll type it in. And let's wait, wait for the search to finish. And this is the starter templates plugin, which I'm talking about. Again, this is a companion plugin to only the Astra theme. I'll click install now, and this will install this plugin on our site. Let's also activate the plugin. So as soon as you activate the plugin, you'll be presented with these choice. Just stick with the classic starter templates. And in the block builder, just use the uh, block builder as your preferred uh, builder of choice. This will make your life a lot easier. Now, what is the starter templates plugin? It provides pre-built websites that you can quickly import on your website. So you see, I'm scrolling down and see so many different options for uh, templates that I can install on the site, which will just make our life easier. Now, there's so many plugins to check out, so many themes or templates to check out. So I'll just search for an appropriate business. So uh, let's go to local business and see if roofing is a category here or oh, roofing services is a category so let's click on it and we'll be uh, presented with roofing options and other themes and plugins or uh, other themes that we can customize uh, according to our needs so this is a roofing uh, related uh, theme i'm tempted to use this but let's also figure out some other templates and just as, as i said uh, all of these what you see here everything is customizable so let's say if you like this theme but you obviously you're not a uh, locksmith or lock, you're not providing lock services don't worry you can change this image change the text everything is customizable so it doesn't matter what the present content on the template is you can actually change everything of about the site now i'm seeing all these templates but i think the first uh, template i saw the roofing services this is the best choice so i'll click here and this will give us a preview of how the theme looks like. Now, there's a plan, uh, some other options that are presented with the starter templates as well. What you can do is upload a logo directly to uh, this page here, and it will be presented as a preview. And I'm just gonna say, hey, uh, just uh, skip all these steps because we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to add your logo to the site anyways. So just for this, you can check out how it, it's gonna look like. It looks beautiful. So what I'm gonna recommend to you is just click the skip and continue button to proceed to the next step. And again, this is another feature inside the starter template templates, uh, templates, you get some color and typography choices. So if I just scroll down here, and let's say if I click this button, you'll see instantly the website actually reacts to different color templates. And I can get a preview, an idea of how the theme will look like if I choose this color theme. Now you can choose any color theme you like, that's completely up to you. I'll just stick with the default colors here, because I think they look pre pretty good. Same thing goes for typography, you have a working combination here, but you have you can go here and see other combinations of fonts. And and see how they look like and choose the one that you think is the most appropriate. Now, just going through the options, some are good, some are okay in my opinion, but I think this one, uh, the Poppins and Lato looks the best in my opinion. Again, you have complete control and we can change this later as well. So don't worry if you 
chose any specific color here you can go and make changes to it anyways so once this is done i'll click the continue button to proceed to the next step and just uh, look at these settings just keep all of these enabled uh, sharing data is completely up to you so if you don't want to share any non-sensitive data that's completely up to you this is completely optional if you want to fill this in this is completely up to you and we'll just click submit and build my website and this will start the website building process it takes uh, less than a minute so let's wait for it to finish and then we'll proceed with the video all right so as you see in just one minute 40 seconds uh, the starter templates actually finish creating our website let's click the view our website button which will open up uh, the website in a new tab where we will actually preview how the website actually looks like so here's how your website looks like after the import is complete and you can scroll around and see it looks exactly like how we saw it looked like in the preview and this is one of the advantages of using astra theme and the starter templates you don't have to design things from scratch because the default themes inside wordpress are not modern in the sense of uh, a business website they are mostly uh, to uh, get towards publishers so this helps you actually create beautiful looking websites that are like for specific businesses and uh, just gives you exactly how you expect your website or what you see in the preview is what you get so it makes your life a lot easier if you don't have any design skills you can just import the website and be happy with it now even though this website looks great you would still want to customize some of the things right you want to want, might, might want to change the menu around you might add your own logos or change some stuff around so there are two ways to change things which i'm going to talk about first is uh, uh the way i'm going to talk about is customizing the entire websites i say the look of the website and the how we're going to do that is through the customizer and the second thing I'm going to talk about is how to customize elements on the specific page. So let's say, for example, you want to change the headline, you want to change the text on the button here, you want to change something else. I'm going to talk about how to change them separately. So what we'll do is first we need to make or understand how to make changes to our website overall, right? We need to make changes to the menus. Maybe you want to uh, have a new different header logo and all that good stuff. So let me tell you how we go about doing that so as i said we will be doing that inside the customizer so what is customizer customize is a built-in feature inside wordpress which helps you customize your website well the name suggests that there are two ways to go into the customizer so let me talk about them as well so if you go into the, uh, the option here if you're logged into your website i'm assuming you are if you're following along the tutorial you'll see that the customize button is here you can use the customizer you can click this button to directly open the customizer but let's say if you are inside the admin area let me just go back by the way if you want to go back to your admin dashboard just click the cross icon it'll take you back to the dashboard now if you're going to go to the customizer through the wordpress navigation menu just go into appearance settings and inside the appearance settings you'll see customizer can you see the customizer it's called customize here but it takes you to the customizer so I'll click the button and will take you to the customizer and i'll explain the interface what it's like and how you can use it to customize your site you'll see a left-handed menu come up on the screen first let let the page load i'll tell it i'll talk about it more when when it's done so this is what the customizer looks like as i said that you'll have a left-handed menu and this has lots of options to customize a website now i can't possibly go through every single one so i'm going to just go through the essentials on what you should know about how to customize things so the first thing i'll go do is go into the global settings and the global settings contains typography colors containers buttons and all this mostly we're concerned about typography colors and some button settings this is what you should be aware about rest is completely optional and not every website needs to customize every single thing so i'll go to the typography option first because it's the first option and it brings you to the same option that you saw when we were importing the template you have some presets for uh, the, the text here so let's say if i want to have rubik and carla as my font combination of choice i'll just click and in a couple of seconds the page will reload and i'll see that font combination appear here now i chose some other fonts i chose probably monserrat and sourcefont or something else but here is where i can actually make the choice once again if i want to change something let's say if i like this font i'll just click this and instantly my font will change so this is where you can actually customize the typography of your entire website so this affects your entire website and the font combination you're choosing is for the heading and the text so this is how it's working by the way if you're noticing that the text actually changed from white to black don't worry i know why it happens and i'm going to explain that as well and i'm going to also tell you how to actually go back and change it and this will also give you an understanding of how to use the wordpress block editor so don't worry about text changing because you'll see some other changes happening on the page as well this is what i'm going to be talking about uh, once we're done with the customizer so you have the preset combinations here 
Then if you want to customize the or choose a specific font yourself, this is how you do it. So inside the body font, let's say go here, click the pencil icon here. This will open up the menu. Now here you can choose the font. So uh, let's say if you don't want Lato, you can just go here and let's say Leak Spartan, right? So you uh, choose Leak Spartan. Then you also have the option of choosing the font weight. You also have the option of choosing the font size, uh, different kind of text decoration and all that. And you can also uh, set these on a, a device level. So right now they're, they're the style is for desktops. So it, it supports responsive design. I'm gonna, not going to get into details because it might be overwhelming for, as a beginner, but just know that um, the Astro theme supports customization options for mobile devices. So let's say if you want to customize, hey, on mobile, the text is not readable. I want to make the font size a little bigger. It is completely possible. Maybe I'll cover that in a uh, future tutorial. By the way, this is the body font and you can do the same thing for the heading fonts. You can uh, click the pencil icon, it'll give you the option of changing the font, all that good stuff. And now changing the line height, word height dif difference the cases and all can be customized now this affects all the headings on your site h1 h2 h3 h4 if you don't know the main heading is the h1 and then this the, the hierarchical order is h2 h3 h4 if you want to change the heading style for different fonts or different or if you want to change the font style of fonts for different headings you can actually instead of this menu heading font you can go into heading fonts here just go and change the h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 h6 and then you have different fonts or typography for different headings on your site this is how you do it you can also enable underlining of content usually i would not recommend it because it confuses the users sometimes but this is how you can do it again this is where you can customize the typography and do remember that this affects your entire website so whatever your fonts you use everything on your website will use that but you will have the option of overriding it and that i'll talk about when i talk about how to customize the colors on specific sections so going back from typography to colors in colors as i mentioned or as you probably saw or you probably saw coming you can customize the colors right you have this palette you have this palette you have this palette three palettes already chosen for you and whatever palette you choose the colors inside the palette are actually visible here so let's say for example i just click this palette you'll instantly see the colors actually changing on the screen. Now, obviously you'll notice this because this website has a blue background. The blue palette doesn't look as good as the orange palette. There's very little contrast. So I'll stick with the orange palette. And of course you can click the pencil icon and have all more presets coming your way to actually select. So if I just, let's say, choose this one, this palette will have this option. So what you can have is three different presets for palettes as well. So if I click this one and then click the pencil icon, if I go here and I choose this, so you can have lots of variety in terms of what kind of colors do you want to uh, present on the screen. So if I go back to this uh, color and let's say if I stick with this pinkish red color scheme because it has enough contrast for us to differentiate. Uh, now, whatever the colors of the palette are, you see them here. Now you can customize the, these colors, but I wouldn't recommend it if you're not a designer because uh, you might mess up the look of the website, but you do have the option to do this. So let's say how many colors, it's nine colors. So you can customize the nine colors that you can include or you want to include in your palette. And whatever colors you see here, especially with this icon inside this you might see I'll, I'll try and blow up on the screen if you see an eye a color with a globe icon inside that is actually a color that's connected to this color so let's say if you want to change the accent and you you select one of these colors everything on a website will automatically change so uh, you can think of it this way that uh, everything that has a globe icon is connected to a global color scheme so if you change the color here it'll just affect everything on your site so this is how it may your the Astro theme makes it easy for you to actually design your website. So this is the accent color. This is the links color. This is the headings color. For example, let's say uh, the headings are right now black. You want to make them white. So uh, what you can do is just go click here and make them white. Now, you might think that this is what uh, you would want because the headings are now white. But think about this. Most of your backgrounds on your website are white. It's not black. So we'll keep it or stick with black and then we'll customize just this, this section to be white. This is how it should be done. Again, for the body, you want to stick with gray and you can add the borders and you want to add the side background and the content background. All these colors can be completely, completely customized on your site. Again, this is com your playground, right? You can test it out. And if you don't like it, you can always reset the colors, choose a different palette. Everything is completely reversible. So don't think about messing up your site. And if you, even if you just break anything, you can go back and re-import the template, will, uh, which will re reset everything from scratch. So the idea being that choose pal palettes, you can switch between the palettes, choose the colors, everything will work perfectly fine. And it makes it uh, absolutely easy for you to customize your site anytime you like. 
right? Going back from colors to container, this is where you can set the container. I don't want, I won't go into details, but just think about this. This is how you set the layout of your site. You can experiment with this if you like. It just sets how the content is actually displayed. Then you have the buttons option and this customizes the buttons on your site. So you have some button presets. If you want the rounded edges, you can actually choose any of these options. For example, if I click this, the buttons will have a rounded edge and you see these rounded edges appear on every button. Now, you have the text color inside the button, you have the background color inside the button, you have the border color inside the button, you can customize everything right here. For example, let's say if I want to have a border when I hover over a button, I can just click here and make it white and I can go here, nothing happens because there's no border width. So if I change the width to, let's say, one pixels across the board, now if I hover over the button, you will see a white outline. So this is how easy it is to actually customize the button. So if you want to say, let's say, I'm not happy with the height of the button. Earlier it was a little, I'd say, taller, right? So what I can do is go here inside the padding and I can just change this to 20. Now you see it's a taller button, but it looks awkward because I haven't added it on the bottom section as well. So I'll just set it to 20 again. And now the button is a little too tall. So I'll just stick with 15 on both and 15 on both. Once again, it affects every single button on your site, except a couple of buttons which we can override. So you should think about this. Uh, whatever settings you change here affect your entire website, but you still have the option of overriding some things that you can customize them. For example, this button is not using the same settings at this button because we can customize and override this. So. Again, you can change the text color inside the button. So let's say you want to change it, uh, this basic color from something white to something else. You can change it. This is the hover color. So if you want uh, the color of the text to change on the hover, you can change this. Background color, again, I have shown you examples. This is normal. This is the hover color. And the border color is also changed. So this is how you change anything. And you can also go into border width and let's say radius, uh, border radius, which it determines how rounded the edges are. For example, if I want to have the right edge, I want to make it a stylist button. I can just do this and also on from the right and also on the bottom left. So let's try this out. Right. So by just changing the border radius on this, I have given the button a more stylistic appeal. Again, this is something you can experiment with and something you want to try. But I just am giving examples on how you can customize your site. You can stick with the basic options. I think this is a cool looking button style, so I'll stick with it. Again, you can just use the presets as well and not customize any of this. And of course, you can change the typography options here as well. So click the button here and you'll have the option of changing the font color as well. So no, not the font color, but the entire font. So you can change what the font is like, the font and the font weight. So anything, the font inside the buttons, you can actually customize here. So once you're happy with the colors, we can go back and see we have scroll to top button, accessibility, block edit, and miscellaneous, which are not important to customize, uh, but you can look at them on your free time. Not something that you need for every website, but these are valuable options to understand. Next, we have the global options done. So now you have customized the basic typography or you, you have the ability to customize colors on your website, fonts on your site, buttons on your site, sizes of fonts on your site. So completely uh, everything on your site, the look of your site can be completely customized. But we still haven't uh, done the most important thing, which is changing the header, changing the font or change, not changing the font, but actually adding our own logo here. So I'm going to talk about that here. Now, one of the biggest benefits of using the Astra theme is that it includes a cool feature inside the theme, which is called the header and footer builder. Usually editing the header or changing the style of the header is not an easy task inside WordPress and it's not straightforward as well. So if I go here in the header builder, you'll see a new interface pop up on the screen, which is more of a drag and drop interface, which will make your life easier. So if I click the header builder, you'll see now this is what is being loaded on the screen. Now, what is this? Just think of this as an actual representation of the header here. Technically, there are three rows to a header. You see, this is the first row, which is invisible here because there's no here, nothing here or technically here. Then there's a second row and then there's a third row. Now, you have the option to customize and just move things around and the header will actually follow everything right here. Let me give an example. Uh, just let's say I'll move this site title and logo here. I'll move the primary menu here and I'll move the or keep the button here couple of seconds and I have a completely new header done. How easy is that? And I can do the same thing again. I can just take it here and move it to the left and move the button to the center. That kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. I can move the primary menu here. I can move the button here. And now again, we have a brand new header. 
So this is how amazing the header builder is. It allows you to customize everything on your site very, very easily by just drag and dropping. This would be usually a very difficult process inside WordPress. So let's stick with the uh, original layout here. And I'll just talk to you about how to customize things on individual levels. So I've just shown you how to move things around. But what about customization, right? You want to change the logo, you want to change the menu items, you want to change the buttons. How do you do that? First, let me explain the process of adding new things. For example, let's say you want to have, have a search option here or anything else. You can just click on the, any of the empty areas and you'll see a plus icon appear. So let's say, for example, I would want to add something in the middle of the third row. I'll just click here and you'll see these options up here. You have the account, HTML, secondary menu, search, social, and widgets. Now this gives you tons of flexibility of what you want to add here. So let's say if I want to have an account menu, which is like if you're logged in, you check your account or something like that, I can click the account option and this will appear here. I can just drag it uh, to here and now this will be added here. So this is where you can customize things, add new things. And I can just delete this if I don't like, and I can just click here and I can add the search option. And now the search option is here. Now, it might also make sense to add the search option between the primary menu and the button. So I'll just drag it here and then just move it around like this. And now I have a beautiful search action right here. So this is how you can add things. And if I just click this, you can remove things. And now let me tell you about how to customize these individual items. So of course, if you click any of these, let's say I've clicked the button, it will open up the settings for that individual element. So right now I click the button and now see, I have the options for the button itself. So the text says, get a free estimate, which is exactly what it says here. I can change it to get a quote, right? Let's say if I just do this, get a quote, Q-O-T-E. And instantly you see the button has actually changed. Now, when you create pages and post on your site, which I'm going to talk about after we're done with this, you can actually link this button to a particular page on your site, which can be a form that can people can fill out and uh, a contact form or anything else. So you can add the link here and you can also click it and this, this link will open up in a new tab. That means users will not uh, like forget where they were. So this is how you can actually do this. And again, as I said, uh, you did customize or we did customize the individual buttons or let's say the global settings of the buttons. But when you go here inside the menu option here, you can customize the individual elements that are here in the header. So just for this button, you have the different text color and the hover color. You have the different background color and hover color and a different border color and border hover color. So this is if uh, you this is where you can customize this particular button if you want to, right? So even though you have complete control over customizing the entire website in just a couple of settings, you still retain control over individual elements. This is one of the benefits of using WordPress, right? It gives you a lot of control. So if you did want to actually make changes to this, so let's say, for example, if you didn't want the border or something else, or you didn't want the border radius to be particularly something like that, you wanted the spacing to be different, the margin to be different, you can customize everything. And of course, you can change the font, the border colors and everything else. Now, coming back to the menus, buttons, I, oh, I have explained everything, how to customize this button. You can remove it, add new buttons and add lot of things here. What about menus? Now, the menu itself, the content of the menu actually cannot be set in this interface. They have to be set from inside the WordPress interface. So if you click the menu, you can actually change things about the menu, but not the menu itself, right? You can change the width, you can add item dividers. And if you go to the design options, you can have the hover styles and some other animations about, let's say if, if you hover over them, you see the, the individual elements are actually being highlighted. You also have some colors and border radius things to be changed. So all the cosmetic things or the visual elements about how the menu looks like can be customized here and you have tons of control. But what about the entries in the menu? They have to be changed from the backend of the website or backend of WordPress, which I'm gonna talk about once we are done with the customizer. So uh, everything you wanna change about the menu, you wanna have, let's say a specific hover style, you wanna online things, you wanna have a fade, you wanna have separators, everything can be done here. So moving on from the menu, the last item or the most important thing on the menu here or the header is actually the logo. So you can go to the logo by clicking the site title and logo and you can also just hover over the individual elements and you'll see a pencil icon appear over them. And if you click on them, this will actually take you to the individual elements that lets you customize the things. So right now in the menu option for the logo or the customizer options for the logo, you see all the options here. You see the logo, you have a different logo for retina devices, logo width, site title, and all that. Now, how do we upload our own logo? That's what I'm gonna talk about. So I wanna change the logo, right? So I'll just click change logo, and this will bring up the WordPress media manager. So this will option, give you the option of uploading your own logo right here. Now, I already have it on my computer here, so I'll just drag and drop it from my computer. 
And once the logo is uploaded, it will automatically be selected here. And make sure to follow these guidelines. This will automatically be displayed here. Suggested image guidelines are 180 by 60 pixels. Otherwise, yeah, you have to awkwardly crop your logo and it won't look nice. As you see here that this is the uploaded image and my logo is exactly the same size as is the recommendation pixels. So there's not, not going to be a problem. And this is what I would recommend you do as well. Resize your logo based on this. So I'll click the select button. I'll give an option to crop my logo. I don't want to crop it. And you don't see anything because it's a white logo and a white background, but the logo does exist there. So I'll click the skip cropping button and just go to the next step. And now my beautiful roofing logo is available here. Now you can also have a different logo for retina devices, which means high resolution devices. So let's say 8K televisions and let's say iPads or Macs, which have much higher resolution than full HD. You can enable this and then just uh, upload another logo, which is usually twice the size of your original logo so i already have that so i'll just add it here and it's just the double resolution here as you see 360 by 120 pixels so i'll just choose that as my retina logo so anytime somebody sees uh i say my website on a high resolution device uh, it'll look like that now for some reason it's not working so i'm going to disable it for now so that you can actually see the logo uh, on the screen here and i'm going to just uh, go here and uh, talk about some of the other options here now this is where you can change the site title as well. If you remember, when we were setting up the website, we have the option to name the site as a title. I showed you how I, when I did it, this is one another place you can actually change this site title. Now, since it's already roofing experts, so I'm going to uh, not touch it here. But when we are finished with the customizer, I'm going to talk to you about another place where, where you can actually change the title of your website. And it's very, very important. For example, if I go here, and hover over my Chrome tab, you'll see the specific name of the website actually coming on the title. The title is, let's think of it as the title of a book. It's the most important thing that uh, Google will look at to understand what your website is about. So it should be appropriate um, to your actual business if you have a business website or whatever you're trying to achieve with your website. Now, you also have the option of uh, adding inline logo and site title if you want to add a site title. Usually, if you have a logo with already some title here, then it's not required. You can disable this. If you have, want to display a tagline with like a text thing, you can actually add a tagline here. And you can also add a site icon. Now, what is a site icon? It's a customizer or I say a fav icon. It's a, the term you was used was fav icon. So if you just notice, I'll just hover or bring you the actual tab that looks on the screen. It actually has a WordPress logo still. And this is where or this is how it looks like for, let's say, somebody's using a website in Chrome or even their phones. This logo kind of represents uh, what the website is about. So you should customize your own website with your own fav icon. So I don't have a fav icon ready, so I'll just pause the video for a second prepare a fav icon and then just I'll tell you how to upload the fav icon and the fav icon should be usually a square aspect ratio so it, it works best if you have a square aspect ratio so I'll pause the video for a second and be back in a second so I have my fav icon ready let's click the site icon button and go to the select site icon button here and I've already uploaded my site icon here so I'll click here and this as you see the recommend dimensions are 512 by 512 pixels which is what exactly my what my site icon is so I'll click the select button and this will select the site icon and it'll give you a preview of how the site icon will look like. Now, it might take a little bit of time to actually display on the header of your website. So don't worry about that. But this is just giving you a preview on how your site icon will look like. We'll go back here. And now so we've done almost everything that what you needed to do on the site. We changed the new logo. We've uploaded our own logo. I've told you how to customize the cosmetics. I've told you how to move things around in the header. All that remains is how to change the actual menu entries. I'm going to talk about that. But you can do the same things which I just talked about in the footer of the website as well. You see the footer here? You can change absolutely everything about the footer as well in a very, very similar fashion. How do you do that? So instead of the header builder, you just go to the footer builder. And if you go to the footer builder, you get the exact same options of completely able to customize everything about your site. So you see, this is the HTML option. This is social. Everything that you see here is just arranged here in different ways, which you can customize. Now, uh, you already understand the concept, how you can do it. For example, if I want to change something here, let's say I go to widget four and instead of our service, I want to make it our services. I'll just click here. And this will give me an option of changing the title and I'll just click our services and now it's done. That's how easy it is to customize things here. Now, if I want to change the contact info, obviously you would want to do that. I can just hover over it. I can just click here and this will give me an option of customizing everything here. So now you have the contact information. So let's say if I want to change this from contact info to contact us, 
Now instantly you see that and of course you can change the address here. So let's say for example I am not based here and instead I'll just change it to uh, San Antonio the X right and now instantly you see the actual uh, items being changed on the screen so this is how easy it is to change anything I can again go here and this is where you can upload your logo once again so this is actually not uh, referencing the logo we uploaded so you just need to upload your logo once again so how do I do it I'll just delete it here I'll press enter I'll add media and in the media, I'll have the option of selecting my logo. So let me just find the logo that I had already. Already, Let's use a smallish logo. And it might be too big for this section. So we might need to resize and add a different logo for here. But just give you an idea on how you can actually do things. So if I just reduce the size of this logo and re-upload it, you can actually do this here as well. So this is giving you an idea on how you can change this. So uh, we provide, so let's change the description also as well. We provide the best roofing solutions in the San Antonio, Texas area. And done. So within a couple of minutes, you were able to customize the contact address, the link section, services section, and I'm going to talk about how to add these things here as well. Don't worry about that. So basically, now you, you still have the option of moving things around. So you have the social icons here. If you don't want to have social icons here, you can move them, move them around. If you don't want the, the copyright notice to be here, you want it to be in the center, you can just drag it here. If you don't want the powered by roofing experts to be here, you can just click and delete this. Let's say, hey, I don't want to be powered by, I'll just delete this. And now you'll see roofing experts come up here. So this is how easy everything is uh, to customize uh, using the customizer. So most of the global elements on the website, because the header footer is global, it'll be on almost every single page on your site. We've changed the colors, the typography, every single thing about the website that you want to customize is customized. Let's save everything and then go back to WordPress. I'm going to talk about a few different things that you need to start working with so that you can actually customize a few things. So let's click the publish button and this will commit the changes live on your site. So everything you've made changes to is now actually live on your site. Users, can, visitors who visit your site will be actually able to see this. Once you're done, you can just click the cross icon once it's published and go back to the admin area of your site. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is the site title, which is what I was talking about in the uh, previous example as well. I'll go to settings here and the site settings inside WordPress, you have the general settings. This is the most important part of the section or most important part to know, know where to change the title of your site. So if you come here, you have the site title here. Now it's the same title that I showed you in the customizer, but let's say you want to have the title more suited to the location based business that you are in. So I'll say roofing experts in San Antonio. Right, and instantly see the title also being updated here. And I'll just scroll down to the bottom of the page, click Save Changes, and the pages will be saved, or the changes will be saved. Now, if I go back to my website and I click and reload the page here, if you go back to the header of your section, header of your website, you'll see that the same title is now visible here. And another thing you'll, you might notice, I'll just blow it up on the screen here, the title of the website is now reflected and the fev icon that I uh, uploaded, the site, site icon is also now being visible here. So as I said, it might take a couple of changes or maybe publishing a changes for it to reflect live. But now you're seeing everything that we made completely appear live here. Now, once this is done, we need to understand a couple of things. How to make changes to individual elements here because this was white. We want to make this white. This was different colors. Sometimes the colors are messed up. That's completely all right. We'll fix it. So. How do we do that? First, let's go and explain, uh, or let me explain how to do that. Now, before we go and do that, I need to explain to you the concept of pages and posts and how they play different roles in WordPress. Now, what are pages? Pages, think of them as static elements or static pages on your site. So a home page is a page. Uh, a terms and conditions page is a page, right? A contact us might be a page. And let's say um, user agreement might be a page, but blog posts are posts. So anything, let's say you, if you have a running blog on your site, that might qualify as posts, but some, something that's static on the site is pages. There are not much technical differences between them. So when it, whenever you're setting up something, you need to be aware of what you are creating and then choose the appropriate option because from the screen here, you can see there's a post section and there's a pages section inside WordPress. So the home page, what we actually added on site is part of the pages section. So if I hover over the 
pages section, you'll see I can add new pages to the site, which I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. But I can also check out all the pages on my site. One of this, one of these is the home page. So if I click on the home page, this is where uh, the all the pages on your site will be visible. So as I said, privacy policy, a page, home page, a page. So uh, you might have uh, multiple pages on your site which are named home, but the actual page, which is the home page, is what this page is, which says front page just next to it. This is how you know that this is the actual home page of your website. So if I click on it and we start editing this page, this will open up the entire page in the WordPress block builder. Now you might be thinking this, is, it might look a little intimidating at first because it doesn't reflect perfectly on how the website looks like because it's, it's, it has limited real estate and some things cannot be loaded in the back end of the site. But don't worry, everything will start making sense once we just navigate through it and we just make a little changes to it. So stay with me and I'll tell you everything how to customize this site step by step. So the home page is now loaded and this is the block builder inside WordPress. It's actually very, very easy to use. It might look a little intimidating with all these options and you might be wondering what's going on. Don't worry, within just a few minutes of time, I'll teach you how to customize everything, how to uh, understand how to use the block builder and you'll be a pro in no time. So one of the first things we'll fix is the color of the specific text that we were looking at. Now, why does this happen sometimes that, hey, the template showed white colors, but when I customize it became black? Because again, uh, to make things simpler, we are using a global font color, right? We want everything on our site to be black, except a few things. So when we just, uh, when the theme sets, hey, uh, let's make everything black. Sometimes the text is actually configured black. So we can configure these or we can override these global settings by using the block builder here, which I'm going to demonstrate right now. So if you remember, this is the section which was completely or different color in white color. And this was also in white color. And this had some other, uh, say, I'd say uh, things that you need to change. So this will give you a great idea on how to actually start customizing uh, or using the block builder as well. So uh, anything you want to customize, anything you want to customize in the block builder, you have to just start clicking on it and then relevant options will be start presenting on the right. So I click here, let's say this option here, you see the block options have all these options available. So if I now click and select the entire text and go into the style tab, which is where you'll make changes to the style. Now you have a color option. If I change the color and let's go to select the white color, voila, now the text is white. We're just linking it to the right color. Same thing I'll do for this uh, text here. I'll just select the text, I'll go to the style tab and inside the style tab, let's open it up. Let's change the color, choose the white color and it's done. Again, I'll select the text or you, can, you don't have to select the text. You can just have to go to the appropriate uh, section. So inside the uh, block, I'm going to the description. I'm going to just set it to white and it's done. So within a couple of seconds, now I've set it completely how it's going to look like or how it actually looked like in the template without actually disturbing the rest of the site. Let's also change our address uh, the same way. This was also something that was white. So I'll just do this color and I just make it white and I'll also change the text. So let's find the text options, text settings. Let's do that. And so let's go to the title. And inside that title, we have the color for the typography and it's done. Once again, we'll go to social icons, go to style options. Let's find the color and we'll just set it to white. And now everything is set to white. So in a minute, we were able to set the text to white. Now, this form is also not looking as it looked like in the demonstration because the background color was actually white and it's actually transparent. So that's why it's looking messed up. So I'll click the outline here and this will select the specific block. And I'll see again in the style options, I have the background color property. All I have to do is just go here and select the white color and now it is perfectly fine. So this is how you customize all the things. Now, if I go here, if you remember this particular piece of text was actually orangish or the, the theme color. So if I go here and if I choose the color here and I go to this color, now this entire color is actually changed to what it looked like in the theme. So this is how you actually change things. Just change the color of the specific elements and it is done. Now, if you don't want to change the color of the uh, the headline, you can just go back to the description here 
and no, the title here and change it to the more appropriate color which is black and this is how you customize things so as i said anything you want to customize just click on it relevant settings will open up and it'll be very very straightforward to follow you'll have general settings where you can change some uh, appearance or i say the visibility of the page and then the style and the advanced app you have everything now if i scroll down here you'll notice something uh, again the same thing the font is actually not in the right colors so i'll quickly just go into the style tabs and quickly start fixing this again clicking the white color here let's click on it and click on it here and I'll go to the title I'll change the color and also in the description I'll go and change this to the white color and let me just quickly speed this process up for you so I've quickly changed uh, the entire fonts for all these elements here but you still might remember that this does not look exactly like how it looked the demo because if in the demo these images had some kind of a dark overlay on top which caused them to actually have more contrast with the white font so if I click on the images themselves you'll see that the image container this style specifically has a specific option called overlay and this overlay is actually not in the right color we want it to be a more darker color so what i'll do is just click in this and i'll connect it to the black color which will make it dark pretty easy right so again all you have to do is uh, look at the settings specifically and then change some of the settings to make sure that you are just configuring them to the right settings and everything will completely work out and you'll have the perfect website in no time so let me just do this for all the themes here or all the images here and in just a few minutes, we have a website that looks completely like how it looked like in the demo. Now, this is one of the easiest things you can do inside WordPress, just changing things around. Now, of course, I've just shown you how to change the colors and the cosmetic parts, but you can change the text around as well. For example, uh, the examples I've given in the previous example or previous uh, say demonstrations is, hey, leading uh, roofing services, not in New York, but I've said, said San Antonio, right? So let's change this. All you have to do is select the text in uh, like this and just type it in. Right, Antonio, and you can just say Texas. So this is how easy it is to change everything on the page. You can click the button here, and the button will give you presets. Then you can change the button content as well. So you can click here, and now you can change the uh, what the link uh, button links to and where everything goes so everything that you see on the page is completely completely customizable so just click and you can change the text and change the colors and change everything about the page as well and this is how easy it is to just customize pages on your site now this is something you need to do only once because the home page of the website is quite static but what about adding new pages to the site so let's go and do that but first whatever we've done we need to save those changes to our site first so I click the update button, which will save or commit those changes to our website. And once this is done, I'll exit back to the admin area and I'll create a new page on the site. So the page is updated. You'll see this button. You see the notice here. Let's click this icon here, which will take us back to the admin area. And I'll show you how to create a new page. So we're back again inside the all pages section and I'll click the add new page to start creating a new page. Now, when you're creating a page, it's usually a blank slate, but sometimes you just want to have a great looking page without having a lot of design skills. Now, this is where the Astra themes features come into play, where you can import a template or you can import a singular page to your site and start building or just use that as a template to build on top of it. So let the page load and I'll explain what that means and how you can utilize this feature to speed up the website building process. All right, the page is loaded. So this is where again, the block builder comes into play where you can actually uh, add more elements on the page, just uh, do more of things and just create a page that you like. But to speed up the process, what we can use is called template kits. And template kits is just a collection of templates that you can use on a site. Let me refresh the library and I'll show you how to utilize this as uh, to build your pages instantly, qu quickly, and let's say more easily. So the library has now refreshed and you can see all these different pages that you can directly import to your site. Now these are generic pages, which provides kind of a wireframe to start your website with. Now you might not want to use this because you might, to, might need to customize this, but it's still a great starting point compared to doing something yourself. For example, a great contact page, you can just import it, change a couple of things, and now you have a great looking contact page. This is one way to go. Let me demonstrate an alternate way. If you go to the kits section, you'll find all the templates that uh, I showed you in the beginning of the video where we imported this template. Now if I go here and search for roofing, you'll find all the different roofing templates that are we are using this template but this template is also a roofing template what if i want to use a couple of these pages 
For example, if I go to the services page, this looks like a pretty good service page. What if I want to import this template and still use the rest of the pages that I've imported? It's completely possible. All I have to do is click the insert template button and in a couple of seconds or I'd say less than a minute, it'll be imported to my site. So let's wait for that to finish and I'll resume the video. So as you can see, once the template was completely loaded, it instantly switched back to the page section here. And inside the page, the exact page that you saw there is completely imported to site. And this is how easy it is. So you can just have a beautiful looking page imported directly to your site without having to worry to design the page. And once again, everything is completely customizable. So instead of saying scheduling an appointment, you can say, hey, schedule an appointment. So I can just change this to this schedule an appointment and I can just say this or I can just say schedule a free consult and instantly just save the page. I just click publish, publish and now this page is live. Now you might also want to add a title here and you can just add our services. This is the title of your page. Let's update the post again or page again and let's also click and open it up in a new tab just to see how it looks like on the real website. And this is how it looks like on the real website as uh, you saw there in the interface or as you saw in the preview. So this is how easy it makes or the Astro theme makes it to actually import pages on your site. Now, uh, we have done, seen how to customize a homepage, add new pages on site. One thing that I talked about that I'll teach you is the menus. So if I click here and go back to our site, and I'll also open the home page in a new tab. This is the home page, right? So what about the menus? I want to customize this menu here and add new pages here, new entries here, right? You want to add something else here. How do we actually do this? So all of this is done inside the menu section inside WordPress. And where is the menu sections? It's under the appearance section. So if I go into the appearance section, you see the theme section, which we went to in the, in the beginning of the video where I installed the Astra theme. You also have the starter templates, which you can go back and you also have the menus option. So if I click the menus option, this will bring up the menus interface. Now, this might be a little, uh, let's say, not the easiest to understand in the beginning, but let me explain how it works. Here is where you select which menu you're editing or if you want to create a new menu, here's how you edit the menu and here's how you add pages to the menu. So what are the menus first? You might be wondering why do I have more than one menu? Well, uh, a theme can support multiple locations where the menu is shown up. So if I go manage locations, you'll see that your theme can actually support five different locations or this Astra theme or this specific template supports five different menu locations. So you have a primary, secondary, off canvas, logged in and footer menu. So you have the primary menu already created on the site, which is this, where is it go? Oh, it's there here. So this is the primary menu that's already created on the site. So if you want to, let's say, change or update this, all you have to do is just change this by going into this section. So first I'll select the menu I want to edit. So I'll just choose the primary menu and select it. And this will load the menu here. Now, if you have the home page, usually it doesn't make sense to have the home here because people usually click the icon here or the logo here to go to the home page. So let's say I want to delete this. So I'll just open this up by clicking the tab here and just click the remove and it'll go away. Now, again, if you go to the about us, services, projects and contact us, technically you already have this get a quote button, which is technically how to get or get a quote. So let's say you want to remove this. So you can again go here and remove this and it will go away. Now we already created a new services page, right? So if I want to remove this services page, which is just a basic, I'd say placeholder, this is the page we created our services. I'll go in the pages section. I'll click our reviews or our services and you can find everything and even search for it if you like and click our services and add to menu. And now it's here. Now, if I want to add it to the top, I can just drag and drop. If I want to make it in the middle, I can also do that and I can just keep it like this. Once you're happy with this, once it looks fine, you can just click the save menu and this menu will be saved on the site. So let's go back to the home page and let's refresh the page and see how it works. And now instantly it's done. You see the beautiful looking themes or the, the template has now completely changed or the, uh, the new menu appearance or me menu is now showing up here. Now, one more option I want to highlight is that you also can create a hierarchical menu here. So let's say if you want to have the about us under the projects or the projects under about us, just drag it and push it to the side like this. 
and you'll see the round border actually switching areas. So once it's actually to the right, just let go and just save the menu once again. And once it's saved, let's go back here and I'll refresh the page once again. And now you see there's a drop down here and you'll see this is a the color is not as exactly white. We can change it to make sure that its appear, appearance is completely fine. But just giving an idea that you do have the options of creating all these or I say hierarchical menus or changing menus right here in the WordPress interface. Let's fix that. Let's save it again just to make sure that it is perfectly fine. Let's go and refresh the page and now it should be fine. So this is how you can customize the menu. Now, if you go into the footer section, the footer section has actually a different menu. So if I open the footer section, I'll click select and open up the footer for us or the footer menu for us. So this is the footer menu. And if we go to the bottom of the page, this is the footer menu, right? This is exactly what you see here. And this is exactly what you see here as well. So again, you can use the same principles I demonstrated to you and change any footer menu or change anything, add new pages here, and just it will be updated to the footer. So this is how you customize the menus inside WordPress and how easy it is, right? So we've talked about everything. We've imported a brand new template. We've customized the colors. We've customized uh, menus. We've customized or added new page. I told you how to use the block editor. Now let me show you how to add a block, couple of blog posts on a site because this is something that you might need to do if you want to attract more audience to your website. So to add posts on a site because blog posts are posts, we'll go into the post section and we'll create our, or click add new post. And this will bring, bring up the familiar uh, interface of WordPress, which is the blog builder because it looks exactly the same uh, when it comes to what I say, the pages and posts, it looks exactly the same. Now I'll already have a blog post written here. So I'll just copy and paste uh, the title here first. So if I go here, this is a common blog post. I just written down, I'll just copy and paste it here. And I'll uh, copy the entire content and paste it on the page as well. Then I'll show you how to use the block builders interface to make some changes on the site. So I click and paste it like this. Let's wait for it to paste. Now, this blog post doesn't look that good because there are no headings, there's no images, there's no, let's say, structure to the page. So let me show you how to do that while also demonstrating how to use the block editor. So once the text is on the page, of course, you see there are no headings here. And you see here, this line which you see and this line you see, they're supposed to be headings, but they're not headings right now. So how do we do this? We'll click and first of all, we'll separate it from the paragraph. I'll click enter and now it's separated. I'll click enter. I'll just separate them individually on different headings and then I'll show you how to convert the regular text into paragraphs. So I'll click this, I'll click this, I'll press enter and we'll just press enter. Now, if you go here to this section, this section or this is a piece of text for WordPress, this is a paragraph. So how do we change this into a heading block? So you can hover over this icon and click and it'll say, hey, transform to and you can transform this individual block to a heading block, a list block or any other block. Now, of, of course, we want a heading right now. So I'll just click the heading and this is now converted to heading. Now, this is a pretty big heading. We won't, don't want it to be this large. We want it to be in a minor, I'll say smaller heading, something like a H3. So I'll click the H2 button here and I'll click the H3 to make sure it's the heading three. I'll repeat this process for the rest of the headings quickly so that you can see how easy it is. So I've made all the changes and now you see it looks like a fantastic blog post. Now it still looks okay because there's no images to actually highlight some of the text on the screen. So how do we add images and especially how do we add a featured image to the post that you can utilize? So similar to how you see these are called blocks, you can add a new blocks on the page by clicking the plus icon that appears or you can click this plus icon and add elements on the page. So if I go here and I say, hey, I wanna add an image so I can just, let's say, click somewhere on the page, I'll click uh, or hover over this section, click, and this will give me all the blocks that I can add to the screen or add to the page particularly. Now you see the image block is already here, but you can also search for it. So you'll find the image block. If I click on the image block, this will open up these options. So if I click the upload option, this will again, I can go to my computer or I can just go to the media library where I can upload things from my computer directly. So if I click the upload files here, I can just drag and drop images from my computer. So I have just an uh, image of a roofing thing. I already uploaded to my site or already in my computer. I'll upload it here. And once it's uploaded, I'll add it to the blog post. So the image is now uploaded and you see it is selected already. Let's click the select button and this will add the image here. Now this is a particularly uh, big image and we want to change some things about it. So I can just drag and like make it smaller 
and I can also change the orientation. So I'll click here and I'll say, hey, maybe align it to the center of the page. And one of the best things about WordPress is everything that you see on the page can be moved around. So I want this just to come after, after the first paragraph. So I can use this the six dotted menu here and this will change my mouse pointer and I'll just drag this here and leave it here. And instantly you see now I have this image perfectly aligned with here. And of course I can crop images and I can add links to it and I can add filters and captions, all that. It's a completely detailed tutorial and we'll have a video coming out very soon on how to use the block builder inside WordPress where we go into deep dive of all these individual features. So if you first build a website and you want to understand more about how to use the block builder, make sure to watch that video and subscribe for that. So once this is done, now, once again, there's another feature in WordPress I want to show you about. So if you want to see how your page is actually structured from a say 10,000 feet perspective, you can just click this menu here, which is the navigator, also called document overview, and gives you an idea of how your page is structured. And you can also drag and drop things. For example, let's say if I added the image here by chance, I wanted to just bring the image up here first. I can click quickly drag it here and just leave it or place it anywhere on the screen, which makes uh, your job a lot easier. And it works with the pages that we imported on the site as well. And it works with uh, the other pages as well. So this is how easy it is to publish a blog post. Let's publish it and I'll show you how it looks like on the actual website. Let's also view the post in a new tab and let's check out the blog post. And it looks pretty good, right? There's the font here, there's the text here. I could have just removed this just to make it simple, but this is how it looks like, right? A pretty good, decent blog post already done on the site. So this is how you create blog posts on the site. And once again, we have done almost all everything, the basics have been covered. We have imported or we have purchased hosting, we have created, uh, I said, purchase a domain name and hosting together. We've imported a template on the site by installing WordPress. And I've showed you how to import pages, customize the pages, uh, write new blog posts on the site. Everything is almost done. The only thing remains right now is to actually install some plugins on the site. Now, what are plugins? Plugins are like apps for WordPress. Since uh, WordPress cannot fulfill every single, I say, customer's demands, plugin infrastructure or plugins were introduced where other third-party developers can actually develop solutions for WordPress, similar to how you have apps on your phone. You can install apps and get functionality on the site. Now, WordPress has thousands of plugins, technically almost 60,000 plugins. So I just recommend you have the top five to seven plugins for the most basic uses. So to install the plugins, I'll go into the plugin section and I'll go to add new plugin. And this will bring up the plugin section or plugins menu. Now, whatever plugin you see here or you can find from here is free because this is the WordPress repository. So we'll start by installing one of the most important plugins that you'll have on your site called WP Forms. And WP Forms is a forms plugin which you can install inside and add new forms. It's actually pretty awesome. I'll just delete this. I'll click install now and this form or this plugin will be installed. What I'll do is I'll install the first key plugins here and then we'll activate them all at once. So this is WP Forms. Let's also install another plugin called AIO SEO. This is a fantastic SEO plugin that you should have on your site. If you want to rank higher in the search results, this plugin gives you all the features and also uh, can connect your website with uh, I say search console and give you a lot of details. AIO SEO, I mistyped, I'll search again and we'll find AIO SEO instantly. So I'll click install now, and this will also be done in a couple of minutes and install. Now, the next plugin I would recommend you install is called Duplicator. It's a backup plugin, so I'll search for it. And we'll install Duplicator as well. And done. Now there are hundreds of plugins, right? You might have uh, 20 different plugins at one point of time when you actually find out that you want functionality. Just to give you an example, on WP Beginner, we have 70 plus plugins installed on a site. So there's no limit to how many plugins you can install. If the plugins are high quality, you won't have any trouble on your site. So you can actually, I can recommend 10 more plugins, but this is not the point of the video. If I go to the plugins, install plugins section now, the plugins will be installed. So I just want to take a couple of seconds to actually demonstrate how these plugins will work and how you'd actually start using them. So instead of actually demonstrating all the different plugins, I'll just take the one plugin, which is WP Forms, and activate the plugin. And I'll show you how to create a form and create a new page on your site so you can add that contact form there. So let's activate the plugin. And this plugin will be activated. Let's for a, wait for a couple of seconds for it to load. All right. So as soon as you activate WP Forms, it will bring you here, which is the kind of the onboarding screen here. So 
If you just want to start the process and follow along the tutorial, just click the create your first form or you can just go into WP Forms menu here and you'll see add new here, which will you or which will take to the same screen where you'll be able to create new forms. Now, WP Forms is a fantastic plugin. It has tons of different templates or pre-created forms for you. So you can instantly install them on your site and add them to your site. It makes the job entirely easy. But let's say, for example, I want to add a simple contact form on your site, which is the basic requirement for any business, right? You're a roofing business, you want contact forms, right? So if I click let's go and I just make sure it's done. I'll just pause this for later. So you see, you have the simple contact form, you have the newsletter sign up form, automotive information form, party invitation, RSVP form, New Year's party form. So you can customize or create any of these. For example, let's say instead of contact form, you are trying to create, hey, get a quote, and then you're trying to get what's the square feet of footage of the area, how much roofing you want to install. You add a few questions so you can qualify your audience. So this is the way you can do it. So if I say, let's say inquiry form, and I'll select the automotive information form and we'll customize this form to roofing business. So I'll click the use template button. I have named the form here. I'll click the use template and we'll just wait for the page to load. So the form is now loaded. And similar to how we saw WordPress working in terms of blocks, the form builder or WP forms also works in a similar way. Whatever you have or whatever you have the screen can be customized, edited, and you can add more fields on top. So you have the standard field, you can add paragraphs, drop downs, multiple choices, checkboxes, numbers, everything. So for example, I want to say, hey, first thing I want to capture from the user is their contact information. So that's their name and email address, that's right? So I can just take this section here and drag it and bring it to the top of the page and leave it here. Now, let's say the phone number is absolutely important. So instead of the email, I can just delete the email section and I'll delete this field and I'll just find the email or the phone number option here, which is numbers. I'll just add it here and let's say, hey, I'll just rename this to phone number and done. And then you can customize any of these fields that you, uh, you want to. So year of registration, probably not relevant, but when was the house built, right? That might be a question because that might determine the quality of the roofing. When was the house built and Something more important uh, might be the square footage area of a house. So I can just click square footage. And then rest of the fields, let's say you want to create a drop down menu of what kind of roofing do they want? So I'll click, I'll delete the rest of the fields which are not relevant to this particular form. And I'll delete this and I'll delete this and I'll delete this. And I'll go to a drop down option. I'll drag and drop it here. And once it's loads, I'll click here and I'll just add the choices. So what the drop down first I'll rename to what kind of roofing do you want? Now I'm not a roofing expert, so I'll just name the choices as first and second and third and done. So now we have completely customized everything. Now. Of course, you would want some of these fields to be required. So I'll click here and we'll just toggle the required things. When was the house built? Everything is required. Square footage is required. Otherwise, the lead is not useful, right? So I've made everything required and automatically the red asterisk has been added next to the individual fields. I'll just click save and this form is now saved on the site. Now, I want to add it to a particular page. So what I'll do is I'll just go and click the embed button and this will allow me to create a new page or select a page since i don't have create uh, page created for inquiries right now so i'll just uh, click create new page and i'll just say inquiry form and i'll click let's go and what this will do is create a new page on my site and automatically add that form there it's pretty easy right so let's wait for it to load and i'll just tell you how it works so Automatically, once the page loaded, you saw that this inquiry form has page has been created. It's already here. Let's click publish. I'll click publish once again. Once it's published, I'll open it up in a new tab. And let's view the page here. And beautiful, the inquiry form has been created on the site, right? So I'll copy the URL just in case. I'll go back. And now since we have just, I've demonstrated how to use this plugin, I'll just activate the rest of the plugin so that you know how to activate plugins as well. Going back to the plugin section, I'll go to install plugins. 
And the plugins that you see that are grayed out or not in the blue highlight are installed but not activated. So I'll just click activate and this will activate the duplicator plugin. As I said, duplicator is a plugin that you need to have backups on your site. It's very important. So this is the activation screen. I'm not going to go into details. I'll go back to plugins, install plugins, and we'll activate the all-in-one SEO plugin as well. So let's also activate that and done. And before we finish the video, before we conclude the video, I'm going to demonstrate one final thing that you might want to do to have the perfect looking website, right? So let's go back. I'll go back to the dashboard. Yes. So as I mentioned that you can make changes to your menus, right? Let's go back to menus and I'll, I'll uh, talk to you about what I was doing. So in the menu entries, if I go here and change to the primary menu once again, as I mentioned, you can add services or inquiries that you want to add to site. So let's say if you want to add a new page now that you have created a new page, the inquiry page form, I can just click the inquiry page form. I can add it here. So just wanted to give an idea that once you've created new pages, they'll show up here. You can add them to your menus and save. And you can also go and change links to the buttons that have you have in the menus and then keep them updated over time. Right. So just to recap, I, to I showed you in this video how to purchase hosting and get a free domain name in the process. I showed you exactly how to install WordPress in one click using the Bluehost interface. Once that was done, we went through the setup process and we kind of created a basic website for ourselves. Then we installed the Astra theme on top. I installed starter templates. I showed you how to import templates. Then we customized the template. We customized the homepage using the customizer and then went to the block builder, customized the entire homepage, created a new page using the starter templates, template options, then created a new blog post. I showed you how to install plugins on your site and how to use some of the functionality of the plugins to create a fully functional website. I hope this was enjoyable. If you still have any questions, the comment box is open. Otherwise, your functional, fully functional website is absolutely, absolutely complete. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something and hope you were able to follow along and get all your questions answered when it comes to building your website. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. You're watching Yuvraj from WBeginner. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.